and thanks for joining me today on this episode of Retro Breaks. As you can see, I am not with Toby today uh, because this is a show about my childhood, about me growing up, and about a particular card that's really important to me. And tied up in that card is all the feelings of nostalgia, all the feelings of growing up, all the feelings of just what it was like to be a kid in the 80s. And so uh, even if you don't collect baseball cards, I really hope that this episode might bring back some memories for you, especially uh, if you grew up in the 80s. So stick around, stay tuned, and we're going to, to have a, uh, a hunt for a particular card. But in the meantime, let's talk about nostalgia. Sometimes people transport themselves back in time with a song, they hear a song, and it takes them back to a vacation they went on, or a, a year of school, um, or or a particular person. It, it just transports you back in time. Maybe it's a movie. Maybe it's a, a, a smell. But for me, uh, it's baseball cards. It's music a little bit, uh, actually a lot bit, but baseball cards, especially just in the last few months, I've been transported back in time to simpler times where um, you would get your allowance and go spend it all on baseball cards and soda and candy. I grew up in the small town of Jacksonville, Illinois, very similar to every other city of about 30,000 when you include South Jacksonville. Um, but it was also unlike any other town. It was all connected by sidewalks. It was um, it was just a great place to grow up. We had um, we had all the big stores. We had um, a couple of different baseball card shops. We had um, we had two colleges, Illinois College and McMurray College. We had uh, the the school uh, for the visually impaired and the Illinois School for the deaf. Uh, it was just a very bustling city, and it was great to grow up in. It was one of those cities that you could ride your bike from one side to the other with no fear. It was just a great place to grow up. And I want to, I just want to transport you back in time with me for just a little bit. One of the, one of the things that I would do, I remember quite vividly, is going to Kmart. And uh, Kmart's out of business now. But we had a Kmart looked just like this in the in the picture that you're looking at, and Kmart was uh, just like Walmart, only a little smaller. It had the blue light specials, and I would go there and buy baseball cards. But another place that we had growing up um, was a place called Jacks, and uh, a lot of my family worked at Jacks, including my brother and my sister, um, and they both worked at Jacks and. My wife, Samantha, uh, worked at Jack's before they changed their name to Shopco, um, but uh, Jack's was another place that, that I would go on a Saturday morning with my parents, and, and they would buy uh, what they needed for the week or a project they were doing around the house or something like that, but I would buy baseball cards because they always had them at Jack's. But the one place I really remember buying baseball cards was Walmart, and everybody remembers Walmart in the 80s. It was this, um, I don't know, like, it was just this place where they had everything, and they still do, but uh, it, the Walmarts of the 80s had, uh, like, kind of this old throwback 70s style, 80s style of, like, wood paneling registers and, and like, old clunky cash registers, but they always had baseball cards at their uh, checkouts. And so uh, there's various pictures that are popping up now of the Walmart that uh, I uh, remember, and in, in, so I think it's a black and white photo you're going to see of Walmart. But then there's some other pictures of what Walmart looked like. They may not be the Walmart that I had in Illinois, but it's the Walmart that I went to. And I remember all of these things about Walmart. And for me, as I said before, Baseball cards transport me back in time. They take me to a simpler time. Uh, and for me, the very first baseball card set I ever got was uh, in 1985. Uh, and my parents bought me a 1985 Fleer set. And I played with that set. I'm not talking about just like I had it, but I played with it. I learned the logos. I learned the players' names. Even as like a six-year-old or, or seven-year-old or five-year-old, I can't remember, it was about six or seven years old, 
playing with like sorting the teams out, looking at the colors, looking at the at the at the different logos, looking at the different players, learning where they played, what position they played, what team they were on, their statistics. I mean, I loved 1985 Fleer. 1985 Fleer was the first set I ever remember owning as a kid. But the one thing that takes me back in time, I've got some things I want to show you here. One, one thing that takes me back in time as a kid is right here. 1987 uh, Tops. And I remember we had a um, grocery store uh, called Country Fair. And uh, my, my, my mom would uh, go to Country Fair to buy groceries and things like that. But then uh, she would always uh, buy me baseball cards. And I remember uh, it would have been in 1986. And it, I remember it vividly. It was kind of a, it was an afternoon. And my mom said to me, do you want a pack of baseball cards? Now, my older brother, David, had always collected baseball cards. He had a paper route. Uh, he got money doing that, and he would go buy baseball cards. And so I remember seeing baseball cards, but um, I had the 85 Fleer set, but I never had the any other baseball cards of my own until my mom said to me, well, do you want a pack of baseball cards? And this is the box. This isn't the actual box, but this is the year, 1986, and she let me buy a pack. This is a wax pack of 1986 tops. And this, for some reason, this box is very special to me. It takes, transports me back in time just to a simpler time. Uh, and this 1986 represents my childhood because my mom bought me a pack of 1986 tops. And I opened that pack of 1986 tops and they look like this, the rack pack of 1986 tops. They look like this. And, uh, I remember the first card I ever got, I, for, for whatever reason, was a Roy Thomas card on the Mariners. He, that card's not worth a nickel now. But it was important to me because I remember thinking, this is the first card I ever owned. And uh, so for some reason, I'm going to hunt for that card uh, just to say that because it was the like, even if it's common, it's the first card you ever owned. It was the first card that you was yours. And uh, since then, I've, I've had a lot of favorite players. Roy Thomas was never one of them. Uh, but I do remember in fast forward through 87, 88, 89. Uh, on Saturday mornings is when I got my allowance after I did my weekly chores. I had daily chores, but I did my weekly chores, too. And I would get my allowance. It was around $2.50. And I would meet up with the guys from our neighborhood, along with my younger brother, Ben. And we would ride our bikes about two blocks down the street to uh, actually two different places. We had a Dairy Queen that looked like this. You can see it in the picture. Yeah, that's what our Dairy Queen looked like. It was a standalone. You didn't walk in. You walked up to it and ordered. Uh, and then next to it, uh, just, just maybe there's a bank in between, I believe, but there was a, there was a gas station called Harper's and in Harper's you would, uh, walk in and it had candy of every kind, soda of every kind in glass bottles and it had baseball cards of every kind. Well, I remember, uh, in this Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon walking into, uh, that Harper's store and buying probably a soda in a glass bottle, a pack of Starburst and these. 1989 big baseball cards. There's 1989 tops big baseball cards. They're bigger, as you can see, than other like regular baseball cards. Not by much, but they are bigger. Okay, you can see them sticking out over the edge. And for some reason, I remember that very vivid memory of pulling from a 1989 tops uh, big pack, Fred McGriff. Uh, and it became my favorite card of all time. And I don't have one. I don't know where it went. It may be in a binder somewhere in, in the attic in the house I grew up in. I don't know. But what I do know is that I came across a box of 1989 Tops Big. And I'm going to open some packs until I find that Fred McGriff card. In fact, whenever I think of sunny, warm, just carefree Saturday afternoons. I always refer to them as Fred McGriff kind of day because it transports me back in time. Seeing that card, these these cards had this 19 uh, kind of 1956 tops kind of look. It had the player's face and the, and a picture, and it was sideways. And they just they were they were cool cards. There's nothing special about them, but for me, 
finding a Fred McGriff is going to be like unearthing like an old lost treasure you buried in your backyard. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to go back uh, and we're going to, I'm going to reset the camera angle and I'm going to search, open some of these packs until we can find a 1980, 1989 tops big Fred McGriff. Now, here's the thing. I may not get one. I know it's in series one. I know it's in the first series, but there was only 110 cards in the series. I think I got 20 some packs here, but I may not get one. And you know what? That's okay. Cause that mean that, that means the chase still continues. So I'm going to open packs until I find a 1989 Fred McGriff. I hope you'll join me and stick around with me uh, as I open 1989 tops, trying to reclaim part of my childhood. Thanks for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. And if you've got like nostalgic stories of you, uh, post them on this Facebook page or on our YouTube channel and just, you know, like let's relive, let's relive the awesome 80s and the cool things that the 80s were to us. So stick around and stay tuned. Well, here we go. 1989 Tops Big. This is what the box looked like. Okay, and then when you opened it up for display on the register or the um, the rack where all the baseball cards was, it would look like this. Okay, and um, the cool thing is, is I got these packs were, I don't even think it says a price on here. There were 36 in the box, but you can see what they looked like. They had the player's face, they had their name in this block letter, and then they had an action photo of the player. This is Roger Clemens, and we are looking for Fred McGriff in here. Here's what the pack looks like. Uh, kind of a all-star. I've taken off some of the, the, uh, the, um, sorry, the, uh, price tags of the, I bought them from someone who picked them up for 45 cents a pack at Caldor, whatever that is. I bought these for a quarter a pack, uh, just to see. So we're going to start opening these. I'm going to open the ones that have the stickers on the front. Uh, and we're going to see, maybe we'll come across Fred McGriff, in the very first pack, and that would be something to behold. But here we go, opening up 1989 Topps Big Cards. They were not in cello boxes, here we go. We got Paul Rungi, Greg Walker, Jay Howell, my, I'm just telling you because you know what this card means to me. My heart's kind of beating fast because I just want to see this card again uh, and have it in person. And I could probably buy it on eBay for a dollar, but it's just not the same as opening it from a pack. So here's Jay Howell. There's a Gary Sheffield, probably a Gary Sheffield rookie card. We got Brett Barbary, Team USA, Ron Gant, and Mickey Hatcher. So. The, the quest continues for the Fred McGriff. All right, here we go. Here's pack number two on the hunt for Fred McGriff. We've got Jose Okendo, who is a uh, St. Louis Cardinal, obviously. Jim Rice, a Hall of Famer. Gino Petrolli. Mike Scott, George Brett, there's another Hall of Famer, Danny Tartable, and Carmen Castillo. All right, so no Fred McGriff in that pack either. I mean, that's too bad. It would really be kind of like a, a strange phenomenon as if they have it on the back here. Um, then you already know you have it. So let's flip it over. We got Eric Shaw, Bryn Smith, Johnny Ray, Steve Jeltz, Jay Buner, and that old Mariners look, Jeff Robinson, and Mike Marshall being the final card. So three packs in. And no Fred McGriff. Of course, we did get another Jay Buner card here on the back of this one. 
very loud packs, aren't they? There is my man, Ozzy Smith, on the cover of this one. Dan Pasqua. Another Eric Shaw. Bren Smith. Are we going to go Johnny Ray, Steve Jeltz, Jay Buhner? So we can see that there are, if you see here, there are repetition in the cards. Okay. So let it be said, I didn't say that Topps big cards were a good investment. I said there's a card in here in particular that is important to me. So here we go. Les Straker, Fred Manrique, Sid Bream, Jody Reed, Tony Gwynn, one of the players I personally collect. That's always fun. Another Ozzy Smith, Dan Pasqua, and there's that Les Straker card. All right, so I thought maybe we'd hit one by now. I really did. I really thought that we would encounter a Fred McGriff, because I know he's in Series 1. And as I said before, we know that just means we're going to keep searching. Jeff Robinson, Mike Marshall, Jose Oquendo. Again, these are going to be doubles now. Jim Rice, Gino Petrali, Mike Scott, George Brett. So I'm trying to keep the show a little, um, trying to keep it uh, for the interest of time if we get into those doubles. Okay, I haven't seen this card yet, so that's good. We got Jose Lind, Nelson Santavania, Don August, Dave Magadan, Sweet Lou Whitaker, Dick Schofield, Billy Ripken. Okay. Am I going to have to buy another box of these cards? That is the question. I hope we get a Tony Gwynn. I'm going to do some. Or a, there's Roger the Rocket Clemens. He's the one on the cover. So that's a card we haven't seen yet. Tino Martinez. Wow, look at that. Less Straker, and then we're going to get into a uh, run of cards we already have. Tony Gwynn. Okay. So that's the biggest problem, is if you get a run of cards that you already have, then you're going to have those cards in that pack. Here we go. Juan Castillo. Mickey Brantley. We haven't seen these cards yet, so there's hope here. Don Mattingly, that's a sharp card. My brother would like that. Terry Leach, Todd Burns, Mark McLemore, and Rock, not Tim, Rock Reigns. Okay, we soldier on trying to get that 1989 Tops big. We got Jeff Branson, Franklin Stubbs, Mike McFarlane, Mark McGuire, Al Hall, Doug Robbins, and Bruce Souter, Hall of Famer. Still no crime dog. Bruce Benedict, Mel Hall, Herm Winningham, Carney Lansford, Jim Presley, the Hound Dog, Dave Valley, Dave Stewart. Another pack. We don't have it. If you, as you can tell, I'm getting a little stressed out. Getting a little stressed out because I want to see that card. Don Mattingly on top. Terry Leach, Todd Burns, Mark McLemore, Rock Reigns. Okay, there's a um, looks like we're looking for card number 15. So we do have proof that he is in series one. 
and Chuck Finley. So we want to be looking for Carmelo Martinez, Gino Petrolli. If we see a Tom Browning, we're going to see a uh, Fred McGriff because of the numbering. Open some more. Cecil Espy, Junior Ortiz, Renee Gonzalez, Kelly Gruber, Terry Steinbach, Juan Castillo, Mickey Brantley. Still no. Still no. Fred McGriff. To be found in these packs yet. Don August. Dave Magadan. Lou Whitaker. Dick Schofield. Billy Ripken. Mike Pagularulo. Pagularulo. Rob Deer. Whew. Folks, we've opened up a lot of these and have still not come across the card that I'm looking for. Danny Tartable, Carmen Castillo, Jody Davis, Len Dykstra, Brett Saberhagen, Carmelo Martinez, Tony Armas. Thought that was going to be the one. Thought that was going to be the one. And it was not. I've opened up, I think I bought 24 packs of these. And I still have not come across what we're looking for. Mike Pagliarulo, Rob Deere, Cecil Espy, John Smiley, Carlton Fisk, there's a new one we haven't seen, Roger Clemens, Tino Martinez. Ron Tingley, Roberto Alomar, Barry Bonds, will this be the pack, Oral Hershiser, Jim Sunberg, Tom Bernanski, Ruben Sierra, no, not in that one. If you stuck with me this far, I appreciate it because uh, <laughs> I got a pile of cards here, or er, Wax wrappers and no card to show for it. De Jim Deshays, Ed Whitson, Atlee Hamaker, Robin Ventura, got beat up by Nolan Ryan, Damon Berryhill, Brett Butler, Steve Lyons, with a beautiful hairdo there. All right, I am down to four packs. Four packs looking for the elusive card of my childhood. Will I find it? That is the question. Ron Gant, Mickey Hatcher, Pat Tabler, Mike Fiore, Harold Reynolds, Kevin Elster, Clint Davis. As you can tell, there's a big size. <laughs> Rick Dempsey. <sighs> there it is. Found it in the third to last pack. Fred McGriff. Found the card I was looking for. This card, if for some reason, whatever reason, I don't know. This is the card that reminds me of being a kid. And I don't know why, but there it is. Fred McGriff, 1989 tops, probably not worth more than 50 cents, but that this card means a lot to me. Um, it's just one of those cards that you collect, um, and uh, it means whatever to you. So I have found it. I'm not even going to look through the rest of this pack, but I'm going to revel in the fact that I have gotten a Fred McGriff, 1989 tops. Uh, this is going to go in a frame because it reminds me of my childhood. Thanks for sticking with me for 23 minutes today. It means a lot, and uh, I will see you all 
next time.